NA1SS, NA1SS, Kilo 2 Zulu, Romeo Oscar, are you ready? NA1SS, NA1SS, Kilo 2, Zulu, Romeo Oscar, do you copy? NA1SS, NA1SS, Kilo 2, Zulu, Romeo Oscar, do you copy, Colonel Wheelock? Kilo 2, Zulu, Romeo Oscar, we've got you loud clear, welcome aboard the International Space Station, November Alpha 1, Sierra Sierra. This is Brendan. How well are plants growing on the space station? Over. Hi, Brendan. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, uh, the, the plants actually grow very well, but the, of course they need uh, they need some uh, uh, ultraviolet light or some violet light to uh, uh, to sort of supplement from uh, for the sunlight that they're missing out on. Um, it doesn't seem the gravity doesn't seem to affect them uh, much at all, and uh, they can grow in any direction, which is kind of neat to see. And then uh, as long as we keep them watered, uh, they can get their water from the from the air or through humidity. It's uh, uh, the root system can grow in any which way as well. So, so it's pretty interesting to see the plants grow. Well, this is Kyle. What was your most dangerous EVA spacewalk and why? Over. Hey Kyle, well, uh, we had some pretty, uh, pretty dangerous ones uh, just about a month or so ago, but, um, but I'll have to say that back on my shuttle flight uh, three years ago was probably the, the most challenging and the most dangerous when I worked on that solar array. Uh, only because uh, I was working with the metal tools and I had my uh, uh, the, uh, the computer system that controls my spacesuit uh, right next to the solar array panels, which had a lot of current uh, running through it. So I was real concerned about uh, arcing uh, of electricity and things. So that was probably my most dangerous. Over. This is Aaron. How do you bathe in space? Over. This is Matthew Colosi. What is the most significant discovery you've made since arriving on the ISS? Over. Matthew, are you any relation to uh, the Colosis that lived two houses away from me when I was a kid? Yes, I'm Alan's son. Great question. Well, probably the um, the most uh, significant experiment we're working on, we, we have over 130 experiments going on right now, but the one that's mo of most interest to me is uh, is one that's called Marangoni. It's, uh, it's actually uh, uh, a, uh, an experiment that comes from the Japanese Space Agency, and um, what we're studying about is optimal ways to carry, like, pharmaceuticals through your bloodstream. So, so they, uh, the researchers think that they're coming up with a way uh, to, to make a pharmaceutical that will actually target and be transported through your through our bloodstream in a more efficient manner, uh, thereby um, you know uh, having the uh, being applicable to the medical field where we can actually fight uh, diseases and possibly cure diseases that are plaguing us. So that's a great question. Hi, I'm Matt D. How do solar flares affect the people on board the ISS? Over. That's a that's a uh, great question. The most important way that it affects us is is uh, solar radiation, of course, and then it also affects our computer systems on board. It's uh, it's amazing um, uh, some of the uh, uh, some of the things that happen to our computer systems. And a lot of times we're replacing hard drives, replacing batteries, and uh, parts to the uh, computer system. So so the uh, solar flares really affect those the most. Over. Hi, this is Sydney. What adjustments have you had to make, both mentally and physically, aboard the International Space Station? Over. Hi, Sydney. Um, well, gosh, uh, a lot. Uh, mentally, you just have to, you have to relearn a lot of things. Uh, you have to learn how to eat, how to drink out of a bag, you know, with no gravity, how to go to the bathroom, how to change your clothes, how to brush your teeth, all those simple things that we sort of do, we can do with our eyes closed on Earth. Um, you have to relearn those things because everything's floating around. So that's probably the biggest mental leap that you have to make. And then physically, um, 
you don't really use your legs much anymore when you're up here, and so we have to keep um, we have to keep doing exercise with a resistive exercise device and also on a treadmill uh, to keep our muscles strong so we can walk when we get back to the planet. Over. This is Tommy. What is it like to be able to look down on the Earth from the space station? Over. Hey, Tommy, it is just incredible. I mean, it's uh, being out here in space, it's, everything is kind of dark and uh, sterile when you look off in the deep space. And, um, and uh, of course, the space station has like black and white colors on it and metallic colors. But then you look at the Earth, and it's like an explosion of color. It's just unbelievable. And even the nighttime, when we're in eclipse, we can see lightning and aurora, and it's just absolutely beautiful over. This is Chris, and how much schooling did you have to go through to get where you are today? Over. Hi Chris, well I graduated from Windsor High School, so you guys are off to a good start if you want to be an astronaut. And, uh, and then I went on to school uh, to study um, engineering, and I went through, I got a bachelor's degree and then a master's degree in, uh, in engineering. And some, if you're interested in math, science, or engineering, um, it's a great uh, field to, those are great fields to go into if you're interested in being an astronaut. Over. This is Courtney. While living on the space station, what do you find more unusual than you had imagined? Over. Oh gosh, that's a good question. Um, more unusual. I think, I think Courtney, uh, uh, the most unusual thing is you kind of feel a little bit weird, like you, you know, like you're, uh, you get sort of misoriented when you're up here for about the first 30 days or so. And then after that period of time, you, when you enter a room, uh, like if you're walking into a room, you look around at the things that are on the floor because usually you don't have things around the, on the walls or the ceiling. But here, you can, you can float into a module and you can have experiments on the floors, the, the floor, the wall, walls, the ceiling. And so uh, that's probably the most, uh, uh, the most unusual thing uh, that I've had to get used to. Over. Hi, I'm Joseph. What do astronauts do for six months to keep them busy? Over. That's a great question, Joseph. And um, usually during the week, uh, NASA keeps us pretty busy with experiments and everything. And then on the weekends, we usually have some time uh, to ourselves. And we we like to read. I I, uh, I read and I look out the window and take photos. Uh, uh, we're able to talk to our families and friends. Uh, I get the chance to talk on the ham radio. So it's really a lot of fun. Uh, over. Hi, this is Kim. How do you determine the time of day on the ISS? Over. Good question, Kim. Well, we go off of Greenwich Mean Time, which is Greenwich, uh, the, the prime meridian that runs through Greenwich, England, and it's called also referred to sometimes as Zulu Time. So we're four hours ahead of you right now. So right now it's uh, 2.30 in the afternoon. So we, we operate our work day off of Zulu Time, Greenwich Mean Time. Over. Hi, this is Nathan. How long did it take you to get from Earth to the space station? Over. Nathan, good question. It took us it took us eight uh, eight minutes and thirty seconds to get from the, the launch pad into space. But then it took us two days uh, to get to the space station. So it, we have to get it just right because we're traveling so fast. Uh, we have to make sure we match it up just right. So it takes two days to get to the space station. Over. Hi, this is Mara. Do the stars look the same from the space station as they do from the Earth? And is there a day and night? Over. Great question, Mara. Well, they, they look, they're actually a little bit clearer from the space station because we don't have to look through the atmosphere. So the stars don't twinkle when you're out here in space and you look at them. And then um, uh, both day and night, because we're opening the Earth uh, so many times, we get 16 sunrises and 16 sunsets each day. So it's hard to determine what time of day it is when you look outside the window. Over. This is Lucas Marshall. Why are you currently working on aboard the space station? Over. Hey, Lucas. Well, um, today, in about uh, three hours, I take over as commander of the space station. So then, so then I'm the, I'm, I guess I'm the guy that's responsible for everything going on. So a lot of experiments going on, and, uh, and in about three hours, I'll be taking over command of the space station from uh, uh, Alexander Skortsov. And, uh, and we're, uh, we've got lots of different things going on on board. We've got a lot of maintenance on, the, on the, the systems and things and all the experiments. Over. This is Marley. Was there anyone who inspired you or helped you believe that you could achieve your dreams? If so, who? Over. Great question, Allison. And yes, uh, actually, many of my teachers in the Windsor High School 
and also uh, in CR Weeks Elementary School, where I went to elementary school, uh, were very, very inspirational to me. And um, and, I, and I think the, the ways that I can think of several teachers, and actually Dr. Dr. Kalesi that's there was my guidance counselor when I was going through school. And um, I remember uh, a lady named Christine West, who was my teacher in fourth grade, and uh, Jerry O'Donnell, who was my physics teacher in high school, and, and lots of others uh, that really encouraged me to really just believe in my dreams and chase my dreams and, uh, and do whatever I can to, uh, uh, to study hard and to, and to be the best in my field. Over. This is Benjamin. What did it feel like physically and emotionally when you were taking off into space? Over. Well, physically, Benjamin, it's a, it's a pretty, good, pretty good ride. It's like, a, it's like the best amusement ride you could ever imagine. It's a little bit violent and shaky. Uh, and emotionally, it's just uh, the pinnacle of uh, Kilo 2, Zulu, Romeo Oscar, 73, from the Copernic Space and Science Center.